of the National Football League. There is so much pressure on NFL head coaches every single week, and both Steve Spurrier and Dave Wanstatt are under the gun in their respective cities. Tonight, maybe a watershed for one of them. Well, Dave Wanstatt caught a little bit of a break by winning last week, and of course, Coach Spurrier had one get away from him. You know, back to Bruce Smith for a second. He never sacked me, you know that, Paul? Yeah, but everybody else in the league did. <laughs> a few. They did. A few. Everybody did. A few. They had a punter sack you once. John Hall will kick off for the Redskins, one of the free agent acquisitions that they acquired from the New York Jets. And the Miami marketing department has been working overtime. They are wearing orange jerseys for the first time ever, resembling those old Miami Hurricane uniforms. I thought they were looking a little bit like Tampa Bay, but now you're right. They're more like Miami, uh, Miami's college team. Travis Miner is deep to receive. And we are underway from Miami. Travis Miner at the four. Flag is down as he crosses the 25. Tackle made by Brian Johnson, and this will move Miami back 10 yards. The Dolphins were missing three starters up front last week, but getting one back tonight. Former Pro Bowler Tim Ruddy is a go at center. Chris Chambers has six catches for touchdowns. He hasn't had that much help, though. The rest of the wide receivers combined have won. Ricky Williams continues to be the workhorse, averaging 24.6 carries a game. The heaviest load of any back in the league. 246 times he has lugged it, and he says he expects to get it 30, 35 times tonight. We had him in the earlier game against Buffalo when he had a club record 42. Brian Greasy gives to Ricky Williams, spins out of the first tackle, and reaches the 12. The Redskins front has been a weak point. Ronaldo Wynn may have been the most consistent, but only has 21 tackles. LeVar Arrington, one of the league's best athletes. The Pro Bowl linebacker leads Washington in tackles. And Champ Bailey is a Pro Bowl fixture as well and playing at that level in spite of multiple injuries. Call it second and nine for the Dolphins. Greasy to throw. Over the middle and down oh. near the 20 yard line. They said it was caught by Randy McMichael. What a catch How did by that get in there. What a catch by Randy McMichael. There was a, a Redskin sandwich. He wound up right in the middle of it. And really, Brian Greasy throws this ball the only place you can. You like to throw low over the middle. Now keep in mind, it's a big tight end. He gets down on it, makes a nice play to catch the ball. Big guys have a little trouble getting down. McMichael, one of the most athletic tight ends, and the numbers on Brian Greasy, who came over from Denver. Back to throw on third and short. Greasy out in the flat. That one is complete. Mick Knight down the sideline. And Mick Knight will go all the way. 80 yards. Boy, James okay. McKnight with his second touchdown catch of the year, just like that. Up 6-0. I'm going to tell you something, Joe. David Terrell is the guy that misses the ball, and if you're going to sacrifice yourself on a pass play like that, you've got to, you've got to be 100% sure that you're going to be able to knock that ball down. When you take a look at this, David Terrell, number 31 on the outside, watch his pass and how perfect this is. He sacrifices. He goes to knock the ball down. It's not there. a bad run either. Nah, but Matt Bowen takes a terrible angle, number 41, to try and help out. Tell you what, if that ball is a foot inside, it goes the other way, but a perfect throw for Brian Greasy to James McKnight, and they desperately needed a wide receiver to step up. McKnight just did. 38 to go, 88 yards, the bulk of it on McKnight's career-long 80-yard touchdown catch from Brian Greasy.
Now that was a short out just designed to pick up a few yards and because a couple of mistakes it turned into an 80 yard touchdown. Well when you when you've got safety play that that's bad you're going to wind up with people going a long way down the field. Chad Morton and Patrick Johnson are deep. Very short kick. And it's picked up by Johnson. I want to show you what happens on this play, okay? There's McKnight. There's Bowens. That's David Terrell. All right, what's going to happen is he's going to come out and run a route like this and head on up. But you're going to see Bowens take a terrible angle to try and make the play. If you're in man-to-man -man coverage underneath, you count on your safeties to help you out. There's the catch. Drummond. But look at the angle Bowens takes. That's horrible. And all of a sudden, it winds up in a big touchdown. Well, let's give Randy McMichael some credit. He made a block down the field. It was absolutely super. Patrick Ramsey goes to the shotgun on first down. They give the toss to Trump Candidate. And Candidate hit in the backfield as Sam Madison came up from the corner. The Skins offensive line hasn't been as good as hoped in spite of another solid year from physical right tackle John Jansen. Lavernius Coles has been everything they hoped for from a free agent. Fifth in the league in yards, tied for ninth in catches. And Patrick Ramsey, who has barely practiced because of a foot injury, has great talent that may be a sitting duck tonight. He's already been sacked 29 times. Miami may have jumped off sides and nearly intercepted the pass as it was right into the hands of Jamar Fletcher. That's a good lier. He's offside. He gets the jump. I know they're, ex know they're excited about getting off the ball, but that's crazy. Miami's front four can really apply the pressure. Adewale Ogunlie already has a career-high 10 sacks, fourth in the league. Zach Thomas, as always, leads the club in tackles, even without prototype size. He produces prototype results as the heart of the defense. And Sam Madison has been one of the league's best corners ever since he became a starter. 29 career interceptions. He's been to four Pro Bowls. Second and eight after the penalty. Candidate on the draw. He has blazing speed, but can't get out of the grasp of Zach Thomas and Junior Seau. You know, and that's not a bad play. Steve Spurrier is calling the plays. Over the last previous two games, Hugh Jackson, their offensive coordinator, has called them. Steve Spurrier has taken him back tonight. And starting out with a couple of runs, I don't think is a bad thing to do. It settles everything down. You come out, you throw three incompletes. It defeats you mentally. I think he's pacing it right at this stage. Since giving up on Stephen Davis, who has had such a brilliant year in Carolina, this has been running back by committee this year. Miami again. jumped again, and Ramsey throws over the middle. That one's complete for a first down. Now we'll check the flag. That time it looked like Jason Taylor got the early start. What well, both of those ends look like they're in track meets. Agunlie and Taylor are lined up on the outside of that offensive formation, and they just decide they're coming off. They fly it. They got to wait a half a second longer. <laughs> you, you know, have you know, to wait. You know what they're doing is they're watching, they're watching Patrick Ramsey's foot. Then they're trying to time their release off the ball. Offside, 99, defense, it's the clock, first down. Johnny Greer, one of the best, makes the call on Jason Taylor. Watch Jason Taylor now. I mean, he's, a, he's down in a four-point stance, and now he's trying to get himself to the outside with Chris Samuels. And Chris Samuels actually plays this beautifully. Even though Taylor had the jump, Samuels got the block. Taylor said that happened by accident when he was tired. He needed to get in a four-point stance for balance. He really likes it. Ramsey under pressure, throw for candidate incomplete. Let's go to Susie. Well, here's the latest on Patrick Ramsey's injured foot from head trainer Dean Kleinschmidt, who, by the way, spent the entire night with him, giving him ice treatment and stem. He came to the stadium in his protective boot, kept it on till he put his uniform on. In three games, they ran through everything. Three-step drops, seven-step drops. The final test was to just throw it as far as he could, let loose. That was the final determination that he could start. And Susie, that injury on the outside of his right foot, it hurts him to plant, it hurts him to push off. Trunk Canada on the draw across midfield into Miami territory. 
Joe, from a quarterback standpoint, there are so many things that you need to have to be able to throw the ball properly, but certainly if you can't plant with that right foot, it's got to change your motion. It's the worst thing that can happen to a quarterback. People, I think, have a misconception about throwing the football. Your lower part of your body is what gives you the strength and power. Patrick Ramsey, because it's his right foot, can't push off, and he's had to change his throwing motion a little bit. It is a bone bruise on a fracture. It has been taken care of medically, so he should be in pretty good shape. I don't think he feels a lot of pain on it, to be honest with you. Third and eight. Four-man rush for the Dolphins. Ramsey airs it out too high. Intended for Garnarian McCants. I think that's the problem, right? You, you just saw with Ramsey. What he cannot do, really, is step up and throw the ball and get direction on it. That ball just took off on him. When you can't step forward, Paul, as you go back, you're right. When you can't step forward, it's hard to get the ball to turn over. He plants, he steps, and there comes the throw. And this also is a product of not practicing. Remember, he hasn't thrown at all this week, so it doesn't take long to get a little bit rusty. Brian Barker will punt to Sam Simmons. Nice high floater. And Simmons makes the fair catch up around the 16. 33-yard punt, no return. Great first series for Brian Greasy. Our passion and the all-new BMW 5 Series, the ultimate driving machine. One of the great natural wonders of the world, the Everglades National Park. There's a pair of shoes swimming around. <laughs> You've got a pair of those, don't you, Paul? I saw in that color. Hey, I don't go anywhere where there's animals with no shoulders. You understand? <laughs> like when I hit a golf ball in the woods, it stays there, pal. Miami scoring on its first possession on an 80-yard touchdown strike. We'll start from its own 17 with Ricky Williams. Gets a couple to the 19-yard line. And the one thing you're doing with Ricky Williams is they're putting eight in the box, and they're, they're, they're going to say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to throw to the outside. Yeah, but Ricky's learning how to run against uh, the eight in the box. Over the last couple of weeks, you see he's got over 800 yards, only 3.3 yards per carry, which is down from his 4.8 last year. But he's really had no big runs, and a product of that is the lousy job the Dolphins have done on third down. The offense can't stay on the field enough for Ricky to get into some momentum. And the offensive line has been beaten up as well. He said a couple of weeks ago he didn't think he was running as hard as he could. This one is tipped and intercepted right into the hands of David Terrell, and Terrell back inside the 10. A return of 21 yards off the tip by David Terrell, who gambled and lost on the touchdown pass. Dolphins wanted to spread this one out. Brian Gracie's trying to step up. Watch to your right. That's Seth McKinney, number 68, but that's not the problem. The play is made by, looks like, LeVar Arrington, number 56, coming in and swatting in the air. It sails on him, and David Terrell winds up with the interception. And Joe is a quarterback. That's just going to make your heart sick. Somebody tips it in the air. First and goal, Redskins, strong candidate. Lowers his shoulder, stops shy of the five-yard line. I'm going to tell you one thing. If the Redskins are going to get in, they're not going to do it by running the ball. Well, they have not had a 100-yard rusher this year, one of only four teams. And Miami has not allowed one all year. They're the only team in the entire National Football League that has not given up 100 yards to a rushing back. And in a couple of games, Patrick Ramsey has had receivers open in the end zone and hasn't got the ball to him. So if they get him open, they're going to have to get it on the board here. And the Skins have been woeful getting points off of turnovers. Ramsey under pressure. Throws too high and incomplete out of the end zone. Had two receivers back there, Gardner and Coles. Now, this is a situation if you're Patrick Ramsey or Steve Spurrier, the play caller. You call the play, and if you're Patrick Ramsey, you say to yourself, all right, I just don't want to make the big mistake that takes points off the boards or an opportunity. If they come out of here with three points, that's okay. You just can't turn the ball over. Well, they haven't come out of the first quarter with much more than three points. They've only scored one touchdown in the first quarter this year. 21 total points through the year. And I, I think the Miami Dolphins defense, they just, I mean, they just really know in their minds that Ramsey's not going to run with the football. Basically, they're in a 3-8 right now. Russian three, third and goal, and the three was good enough. Jason Taylor got there, the throw for the end zone, incomplete. And Ramsey is down. Now, 
hit it. The this way it kid looks, has been beaten up all year long. How did he get that off? I don't know how it wasn't called down before he threw it. I think that they called him down. They called him down. Now, here it is, Jason Taylor. This is a three-man rush. He just jumps inside of Chris Samuels. Uh, Jason Taylor's got him. They call this, they call this down. Oh. Yeah, and then Jason Taylor sort of just slams his side of his head into the ground. Jay Williams comes from the other side. Watch this. Now, here, here comes Jason Taylor. Now, coming from the right, there's number 91, Jay Williams. He lands. Oh. Patrick, the first thing that hits the ground is his head. Now, here is the worst thing, the worst scenario possible for the Redskins because Ramsey came in hurt. They only have two quarterbacks on the roster. Tim Hasselbeck is the backup. He has thrown three passes in his entire NFL career. About a block down. Took a header into a thorn bush. You know what, I'm scratched up, but okay. Don't worry about me, the dog is what's important. I don't have a dog. Whoops. If you really want tickets to the game, just use your Visa. It's the card you know they'll take everywhere you want to be. Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Thing as Patrick Ramsey comes slowly to the sideline, he was slammed into the ground. A three-man pass rush on third down, and two of the three got there to sack him before he could throw it. And now John Hall will try the field goal. The spot at the 18, so it's a 28-yard try. Hall 17-22 this year. And the Redskins get the interception, but only convert three points. And here is what happened to Patrick Ramsey. Well, Patrick Ramsey, you know, this kid is really tough. Watch what happens here. Jason Taylor steps on his left ankle. There. Now he's going down, he's got him around the neck, and Jay Williams is the guy that's gonna come in and just nail him. And it looks like his head and shoulder hit the ground at the same time. This is one of the toughest quarterbacks I have seen in a long time. I mean, I, John Elway to me was, was a, just a tough guy. Brett Favre is right. a tough guy. Patrick Ramsey belongs in that same category. He may have only been sacked 29 times this year, but he's been hit a ton more. Yes, he has, and at this rate, he's not going to have a chance to have the longevity of those other guys' careers. That's another sack, Joe. That's 30-10. Right, they, gave, they gave that sack to Jason Taylor. Who, who, and if I was Chris Samuels, the left tackle of the Redskins, I'd be really embarrassed at this point. The Dolphins rushed three guys. Three. And Jason Taylor was lined up across from him. And Patrick Ramsey didn't even have a chance to defend himself. You know what? I really enjoyed talking to him, Patrick Ramsey, yesterday. And the guy said, first of all, he's got no voice. He can't talk. He's in a boot. He limps into the room. And he said, hey, I'm playing. I, even though I haven't thrown the ball all week long, I'm playing. I should be ready to go. Travis Miner is deep. Good kick this time. Deep into the end zone. And they'll take it at the 20. The Redskins score was set up by the tip from LeVar Arrington, and he's wired for Sunday night. Many people that play with any more emotion, any more skill, any more athletic ability than LeVar Aaron. Here comes the blitz. Williams hitting the backfield, slips out of a tackle, crosses the 20. Arrington had him and lost him. People talk about great linebackers in this league, and if you're on a, a football team that's struggling, the Redskins are four and six, you maybe don't get the credit. LeVar Arrington is a two-time Pro Bowl player. He should be a three-time Pro Bowl player oh, yeah. after this year. I put him in the category of Ray Lewis. Uh, to me, uh, I think those two guys play with the same kind of motor, go sideline to sideline. He's asked to do a lot more different things than even Ray does. And Junior say I was another one of those guys that I would put in that extremely good character. Junior more Pro Bowls than any other linebacker. Greasy to throw under pressure from behind, and they got him. Ronaldo win came off the quarter. Did Bruce Smith get there as well? Here comes the official score. It's like waiting for an error or a hit. Does Bruce get a half a sack? A half would tie him with Reggie White. 
Look, here comes Bruce Smith. He's on this left-hand side over Wade Smith. Now, does he get a piece of it? Uh, you know, I think so. Come on. Yeah, give him a half. Ronaldo wins already got him wrapped up. He I got to get you know. I, they give him a half, and he has just tied the record of Reggie White. 198 career sacks, and that's a football that nobody else is going to get. Now, he has a chance to get another one when it, if he gets a, another one tonight to break the record. That's right, this and he'll a, keep that ball, too. And if the Redskins win, he could get a third, so this could be a three-ball night. <laughs> no, Bruce that, Smith. The ball goes to the Hall of Fame. Go he might ball. send him another one. <laughs> one Greasy back to throw. Instead, the draw play to Ricky Williams across the 15 to the 16, where middle linebacker Jeremiah Trotter got it and Miami will have to punt. Neither one of these two teams, the Miami Dolphins or the Washington Redskins, need to be in anything but third and short. I mean, I, you know, you're going back, you've got third and 15 or 16, and you try to run a draw. And I think if you're the Miami Dolphins, you start to feed Ricky and feed Ricky and get some pace going there. Patrick Johnson deep for Turk's punt, which is sky high. Johnson fair catch the 44, a beautiful 40-yard punt by Matt Turk. Bruce Smith has toiled at this profession for 19 seasons. He has just tied the record of Reggie White. Miami and Tim Hasselbeck is the new quarterback out of Boston College, originally went to Buffalo as an undrafted free agent has been with the Bills, the Eagles, Carolina, played in NFL Europe, and now to the Redskins, where he has thrown three passes in his career. That was his fourth, an attempted screen, which was incomplete because Tim Bowens was right in the middle of it. Let's check in with Susan. Here's the injury update on Patrick Ramsey. They're saying that he was simply shaken up and he just needs time. The trainers have been looking into his eyes, working his neck, working his jaw. They're calling him questionable. Guys, we know how tough he is. He could come back. Susie, we have seen enough concussions to assume that might be the problem, the way they were talking to them and the look right now on Patrick Ramsey's face. Boy, these defensive linemen are just going to tee off and go now. Hasselbeck straight back to throw. Sits in the pocket, then throws complete. Nice strike to Rod Gardner. Remember what Hasselbeck said to us? If I get in once the game starts, we're just playing football. Doesn't make any difference. It does. It does. It doesn't make a difference to him. But if something would happen to him, they would have to go to Cliff Russell, a wide receiver, as the other quarterback. Nice job of setting in the pocket. I don't think you can give this young man a, a chance to sit back there. If I'm the Miami Dolphins and Jim Bates, their defensive coordinator, I'm coming after him. The Redskins have not picked up blitzes. This is a guy that's not comfortable in the system. If I'm them, I'm coming. How's that for play calling, though? First two plays, he throws. Now they'll give it off. And they've got the new back, Chad Morton, in there. Mike, you know why Hasselback is at it? I think he's at an advantage here. It's because they don't know anything about him. They don't know what his cadence is like. They don't know what, what his tendencies are. They have not seen him. So when they're sitting out there and they can look at him, you've got to sit and wait a little bit to think, you know, think about what is he going to do and how is he going to do things. That first throw he made was an excellent throw. That's why I wouldn't give him time. I agree That's with you, right. Paul. You've got to go get him because if you give him time, you don't know what he's doing. Chad Morton gained nine and a half yards on that carry. Drunk Candidate is back in on second and inches. And Hasselbeck to throw. Gets good protection and throws incomplete. Lavernius Coles with a diving try. Hasselbeck has thrown only three passes coming into this game in his NFL career. That was a couple of weeks ago. Played at Boston College, was an undrafted free agent with the Bills. Then went to the Ravens, went to the Eagles, NFL Europe couple of practice squads and signed for the Redskins. It's an ignominious beginning to a, a career, but we have seen so many guys who finally got an opportunity and made it pay off. And Trunk Candidate will get the first down near the Miami 33-yard line. Probably the biggest one that comes to mind is a kid by the name of Kurt Warner who took advantage of an opportunity. 
You know, yesterday when he came in and he sat down, I'm telling you, folks, he did not look nervous at all. No, he's he, very confident. He said, hey, he, and we said to him, do you expect to play? He said, I certainly do. I know that. No, he didn't know oh. that he was going to get hurt. He's been there three weeks for crying That's out. That's right. Yeah, he knows. But the thing about it is, though, Spurrier said about him, he's a very smart young man, and he picked up the offense very well. They haven't cut anything back for him either. His brother, Matt, of course, the starter in Seattle. They talked this week to get a little bit of advice. Back to throw again. Hasselbeck sidearms this one. Wasn't that pretty? See, this is where I think he's a little bit different than Patrick Ramsey. Patrick Ramsey does not move around that well. A good Lier comes on the outside. He slides up inside. Nice job of sliding over. You see a lot of moves like that out of Tom Brady with the New England Patriots. Tom slides very well around in the pocket. Tim looks like he's just running on instinct, and that's the way you have to play the game. And he has almost always been in a West Coast system. That's what he's familiar with. This is not a West Coast passing system. He has had to pick everything up on the fly after they released Rob Johnson. Castle back to throw again. Drops this one off to Kennedy, trying to get to the outside, and has a first down at the 21-yard line. <laughs> Zach Thomas with the tackle, and Tim Hasselbeck right now is living a dream. Well, and, and it, the thing about it is, if you take a look at him, just look at him. He's having some fun. He really is having some fun because he knows that they don't know him. Look at this. But little you know play what I, action, little screen out the candidate. You know what I like? The old ball coach is calling some plays That's where right. he's getting the ball out of the hand of the quarterback quickly. Remember now, Steve Spurrier's taking back over the play calling abilities, and there he is delivering the blow on Zach Thomas. Hard run by Trung Canada to get the first down. Back to Miami after this. Miami and the Dolphins are on top of the Redskins seven to three but backup quarterback Tim Hasselbeck is driving Washington downfield they have a first and ten from the Miami 20. Chad Morton on the draw. Morton breaks a couple of tackles and gets inside the 15 yard line. Now let me just say something here. This is where the Redskins have shot themselves in the foot all year they get a good drive going they get some momentum going and then all of a sudden a ball gets tipped they miss a handoff somebody trips somebody misses a block this is a very critical drive for them not just for tim hasselbeck but i think for the entire redskin team from a psyche standpoint keep the positive momentum going and for the dolphins their defense is their strength so they shouldn't be run over like this the up back is brian johnson Candidate back in there. Had a hole up the middle, closed immediately by Bowens. This this kind of an interesting run. You, you got you got Brian Johnson as the fullback, and he goes left into a hole. And then you see Trunk Kennedy go right. Deception call. Very, very nice deception. That picked up a yard. <laughs> they got followed the fullback in. The run was deceptively yeah. short. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Tenth play of the drive coming. Third and three for the Redskins. Miami changing personnel, and the Skins will go with one, two, three, four wide receivers. Coles in motion. Blitz coming, and it's batted down. Terrell Buckley coming off the corner, leaps and knocks it down, and does anybody make more big plays than T-Buck? I'll tell you, T-Buck is, is funny. This guy... You talk about timing a play perfectly. Number 27, Terrell Buckley, up in, look, up in the air, bing. That thing hit him in the face. He's one of four guys, free agents, that were added along with Junior Seau, Sammy Knight, Jeff Scanina, and T-Buck, all on defense for the Miami Dolphins, and all of them have played very well. Yes, they have, and John Hall has already hit a 28-yarder. We'll try one from 31. The Redskins again go deep into Miami territory and come out of it with a field goal, but now they've cut the lead to one. Earlier first quarter, Bruce Smith got a half sack on Brian Greasy, the first time he had ever gotten to that particular quarterback along with Ronaldo Wynn, and the half sack ties him with the legend Reggie White. And this is what it sounded like from LeVar, LeVar Arrington, who's wired. <laughs> hey, boy! Hey! 
<laughs> that's what's up, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, that's real, boy. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Seven, eight. In the house. <laughs> well, when LeVar Arrington came into the National Football League, and he is one of the great stars already in this league, Bruce Smith had already been playing defensive end for 15 years. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking to Bruce yesterday. I had a, I had a moment with him afterwards. And he just said, I, I just really can't wait till it's over with. I think I got to get, you know, I got I mean, there's a lot of pressure. I got the here. sense I saw a lot of relief on his face oh, now. Oh, man. He's finally you. there. Wait till the next one. Okay. Travis Miner, deep to return from Miami. A yard deep in the end zone. He'll bring it out. Only gets back to the 16-yard line. As of this very moment, Bruce Smith and Reggie White tied at 198. Kevin Green at 160. And there is no one right now on the horizon who you could even guess might get near that number. You know, when you look at these these three guys, I mean, they're exceptional. But I, I'll never forget the night that it wasn't a sack when Reggie White picked the back up and threw him at the quarterback. Oh. <laughs> I never saw anything like it. Reggie did some things that just made your jaw drop. <laughs> Tommy Kramer was was Bruce's first victim. Ricky. Boy, Champ Bailey, who was playing with a couple of injuries this year, always so good in run support. There are a lot of corners in this league that don't want to tackle. I think Antoine Winfield, to me, that guy's special. Champ the complete he could be the best all-round corner in this game you got Freddie Smoot who's good of course Sertan and Madison both been to the Pro Bowl but this guy here is as complete as they get he's big he's tall he's struck got great hands he admits he doesn't want to come up and hit those guys he's struck tongue and stuff he's strong and struck and, struff. Strong and I, I'll tell you there are many guys who are tongue and struck in this game <laughs> Greasy under pressure, wanted to set up the screen and never had a chance. Bernard Holsey led the charge, and he had a lot of help. Well, let me tell you one thing. If you're gonna, if you're gonna play action, you better block somebody up front. Greasy's running the play action pass and getting nailed. As soon as he turns, watch this. Greasy, play action, he turns around, and when he does, look at who's in front of him, 90 Halsey. I want to tell you, that was an ill-fated play from the beginning because either Ricky Williams went the wrong way or Brian Greasy went the wrong way because he was looking for Williams to be faking to the left and helping out. And Rob Conrad didn't pick up the blitz because he was the screen guy. He had to get out in the pattern. Third and 17. Draw play. Williams breaking a couple of tackles back near the original line of scrimmage. And Miami will have to punt it away. And here come the Boo Birds. They don't like the call. They booed Dave Wanstead at the end of last week's game, which I thought was unconscionable. He had 51 seconds to go from his own 20 into a strong wind in a tie game. And they're booing because he ran the ball to play for overtime when they eventually won. What would you like the guy to do? I like this call. I think you've got to conservatively still play to get. You're ahead 7-6. Exactly. You know it's going to be that kind of a game. The other team has lost its starting quarterback. They're not down 38-3 with 30 seconds to go in the game. And they got a tremendous defense. Patrick Johnson is deep. We will not get the punt off until the second quarter. That's the end of the first 15 minutes. Dolphins on top of the Redskins. 7-6. <laughs> Who had the best day in the NFL? Amon Green, 154 yards on the ground. Matt Hasselbeck, 333 yards passing. Chad Johnson, three more touchdown catches. Deuce McAllister with it is eight straight 100-yard gamer. Anthony Wright with a miracle comeback. Turk putting Patrick Johnson. Tells everybody to get away. And it rolls just across the 40. Let's check in with Susan. Well, you get the feeling, talking to Dave Wanstatt, that the Dolphins' quarterback job is an open competition. If Brian can get things going, then Jay Fiedler may not be automatic for his return. And, I mean, what an odd run for Jay Fiedler. It seems the only time he's truly appreciated is when he's out. The guy is 32 and 15 as a starter. His backups are 5 and 6. But as Zach Thomas says, 
when he's in, the fans seem to want him out, and when he's out, they want him in. And wow. Susie, how many quarterbacks in this league would give their left arm to be 32 and 15 at starters? <laughs> Hassel back to throw again over the middle and this one is complete into Dolphin territory. You know the pass run ratio for the for the Redskins right now is 12 passes and eight runs. That's a good balance. That is not what Steve Spurrier defines as his fun and gun. And this is more an offense that he is adapting to as a professional coach. He's had to change a lot. He has. Spurrier's had to make some modifications in what he wanted to do with his offense. I give him a lot of credit for growing and learning and being willing to do that. I'll tell you who's having fun right now, and that's Hasselbeck. Strong candidate trying to turn the corner, but a Gunlier brought him down. Tim Hasselback looks like, uh, well, this ain't so hard, you know? They don't know what I can do and what I can't do, so this is not so hard. Just the way it play. worked at give Boston College. Hey, 4 7, 38 yards. Okay, give me some plays. Ramsey warming after being knocked out of the ball game. They are the only two quarterbacks on the roster, Cliff Russell who was on IR last year, a flanker, is the backup emergency quarterback. John Simon, a free agent running back, number 45 is in. Taylor tried to get around the corner and couldn't, and Simon will make the catch at the Miami 43-yard line. Jason Taylor is lined up on Samuel, number 60. Now, he comes around, What his leg is gonna slip right about right there. He almost got the hassle back, and he knows if he could have planted that foot, he'd have been there. Samuel's having a tough time with this guy. Well, you know, the Dolphins, you see him signaling for the crowd. If the crowd can get into this and get louder, it's going to be more difficult for the tackles to hear Tim Hasselbeck. Third and five. Four wide receiver set, and Hasselbeck throws. Has the first down. Patrick Johnson makes the catch, and Hasselbeck has been unerringly accurate so far. Just remember now, Hasselbeck practiced all week long, and he pretty much knows this offense, but what he's doing, he's not taking any chances at all, Joe. There's an open guy, six yards down, I'm hitting him. You're right, Paul, and, and, and what, I, what I appreciate is the offensive line is doing a good enough job to let him get the ball out of his hands quick. Coach Spurrier is not trying to throw 15 and 20 yard routes. He's allowing him to get the ball out of his hands quick. Again, a little bit of a modification in what the Redskins were doing earlier in the year. And these are three and five step drops, not seven down the middle of Cole's touchdown. Woo! Now they go up top and Hasselbeck throw a strike to Lavernius Cole. The old ball coach just can't sit on short routes, can he? <laughs> What a throw this is. For Lavernius Coles, his fourth touchdown catch of the year for Hasselback, the first touchdown pass of his professional career. Give him the ball. Watch the touch on this pass. Little pump fake. Lavernius Coles downfield. Outruns Patrick Sertan. That ball is thrown absolutely perfect. Hasselbeck, four out of four, 59 yards and a touchdown on that drive. And the Redskins have stunned the Dolphins behind the inexperienced backup quarterback, Tim Hasselbeck. And they lead in Miami 13-7. Country, Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Toyota, get the feeling. And Miller, who reminds you that there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. Back in beautiful Miami, and if you just joined us, surprise, the Redskins are leading the Dolphins 13 to 7, 12 06 to go in the half. They're doing it behind Tim Hasselbeck, not Matt. Tim, I don't think the Dolphins have crossed the 35-yard line tonight. I mean, their own 35. They've been backed up in their own end. Just on the one scoring play, and after that touchdown, they've had an interception, a three and out, and a three and out. They've only they've lost three yards total offense. Having crossed that of their own 20. Three drives started inside the 20 are not going to get you a lot of points. That's some play calling by the Redskins. Travis Miner deep. This one's taken by Simmons. And Sam Simmons tries to get to the outside to the 36-yard line. Taken down by John Hall, the kicker. 
Brian Greasy hoping to restart that Dolphins offense as his club is down 13-7. There is a flag down. The Dolphins can't really seem to find a rhythm on offense. They try to come out and open it up. They hit the one big play, and then it's been a sputter with Ricky Williams. Taylor Jacobs, the wide receiver, is the injured player for the Redskins. We'll check on him in a moment. Tonight, three plays, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Since then, it has gone in the tank. They have lost three yards in three possessions. Draw play, Ricky Williams. Breaks this one to the 45. Picked up eight, maybe eight and a half. Boy, they needed that. And the one thing about Ricky, though, when you look at him, he gets his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. And when he's running like this, he is all downhill. Look at his shoulders. Boom, he gets back square up downfield, and he picks up nine, eight and a half yards on the play. Rob Conrad does a good job on Mitchell. And then Ricky does the rest. Trying to move the pile, searching for first down yardage, and he'll have it near the 49. Brian Greasy got off to a really good start. Hits James McKnight with an 80-yard touchdown reception. Now, LeVar Arrington tips the ball up. David Terrell picks it off, winds up with field position. Now, Bruce Smith comes around, gets his 198, gets a half a sack. There comes Arrington. Another sack. Bernard Holsey puts him on the ground. Williams. Boy, did Chambers come in and throw a great block <laughs> from his flanker position. He really opened it up. Chris Chambers is one of those players that I think can be a top-notch player in this league. It's just going to take a little bit of time for him to be able to get some passes, get some opportunities, and have this offense be moving. Or was that Darius Thompson? That was Darius Thompson, number 88, that makes the block. Of course, he was a former Redskin. Of course. And has been a major disappointment. Only 15 catches this year as a starting wide receiver. Travis Miner gets a shot at it. Miner down to the 40. Jeremiah Trotter, the middle linebacker, made the stop. But another Dolphins first down, and this was what Miami does best, just grind it out. All on the ground. Greasy has not thrown a pass, and now it's time to throw a little play action. But, you know, I, I, I really think that they're afraid to get themselves in third and long. I would, too, if I was them, being that they haven't completed. They've been 0 for 13 coming into this game on third and 10 plus. Out of the eye this time, and Miner again, straight up the middle. They're really taking advantage of the middle of that Redskins defensive line. Well, in the first quarter, we saw the Washington Redskins just jam up the middle. There was no place to run. Now, all of a sudden, the Miami Dolphins, but what they're doing is Ricky Williams is breaking out to the outside. Travis Miner is just a little delay step to get these guys upfield, breaking back to the outside. Well, it hasn't exactly been a run defense that scares anybody. They're 23rd in the league, giving them up almost 130 yards a game. Williams back in there after the breather. Looked like the Redskins jumped. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 68, offense. Still second down. Seth McKinney, and we'll check in with Susie. Mike, Ricky Williams admits that this season hasn't been what he thought it would be. He thought it would be more like last year when he led the NFL in rushing with 1,800-plus yards. He said this year he's had to deal with more adversity than at any other time in his career, even during his struggles in New Orleans. He said because in New Orleans, no one really expected them to win. Here, the expectations are so high. When you have 14 Pro Bowl players on your team, no wonder why. And Susie Ricky with another carry inside the 40. Brian Greasy has not thrown a pass since the interception. When he has had time, as you can see on that first series, he has thrown the ball very accurately. And it hasn't been that he hasn't tried. Right. He's been sacked a couple times since he threw the interception. Ricky Williams has carried it 84% of the team's running plays. The heaviest load in the NFL. You saw Travis Miner, the guy who comes in to give him a breather. Occasionally, Conrad will get one. Now we're third and eight again. And Greasy will go to the shotgun. Four-man rush. And Greasy throws incomplete. 
It was intended for Ricky Williams, and he never got his head turned around, and the pass went right by him. Wouldn't have made any difference. Jeremiah Trotter, number 54, was on him the whole time. But at least the Miami offense has created some field position advantage for themselves. It's a close ball game. It's 13 to 7. At least now you have a chance to back up the Redskins. Turk will punt to Patrick Johnson. And how about Greasy's progression? He plays for uh, his father is the Hall of Famer, Bob Greasy. He replaces the legend in Denver, John Elway, as this punt kicks into the end zone. Then he comes here, back to his father's home, and he's got a statue of Dan Marino outside of the stadium. Back to Miami in a moment. 13-7 backed up to their own 20. Tim Hasselbeck has come on for the injured Patrick Ramsey, and all he has done is hit 7 of 10 and thrown a touchdown pass, the first in his career. Candidate trying to use that speed, gets outside across the 30, gain of 11. Tim Hasselbeck has done a really nice job of moving around in the pocket. Gets the ball out real quick. Slides, slides around. Trunk candidate comes up. Now, when he has to set in the pocket, makes the throws. Good little pump fake. Get the ball out of your hand quick. And that's a perfectly thrown ball for a touchdown to Lavernius Coles. Well, Greasy, when he comes out, he has an 80-yard touchdown pass, and Hasselbeck is on the bench. So he spots him 80 yards. Hasselbeck now has more yards throwing than Greasy. And Patrick Ramsey still looks like he's just not all there. Just leave Patrick right where he is. This guy's doing fine. Candidate on the draw, he will get a couple. Oh, he felt like he had a lot more in him there. Just tripped over somebody's foot right at the line of scrimmage. May have been Samuels' his left tackle. Well, now what you're doing is now the play calling of Steve Spurrier has the defensive coordinator of the Dolphins, Jim Bates, a little bit unsettled. Do I come after him because they hit the big touchdown? So I'm not sure. Do I, do I blitz linebackers to stop the run? Well, what happens if they put the ball down the field? Simon is in at running back on second and eight. Castle back to throw. Simon, nice move to get away after the catch, and Simon to the 44-yard line. You know, Tim Hasselbeck was with the Eagles in preseason, and Andy Reid said, this kid has talent. He's going to play for somebody. Well, Zach Thomas that time misses the tackle. You don't see that very often. And watch Simon. He's going to stop back to the inside. Zach gets an arm on him. But you're not going to bring him down with an arm. Gay at Zach moving one way. Simon comes back to the other way. That's another first down. And, you know, as much as the Redskins throw the football, we've talked to Zach many times. He hates teams that throw the ball. He wants to get up there and mix it up with people. Simon, another undrafted free agent. Here comes the blitz. Hasselbeck, flanker, screen. And the Redskins calling the right place at the right time. That one to Patrick Johnson. They go with a flanker screen on the blitz. That was really pretty. This was a this was a great call here because they catch Miami up on the line of scrimmage and watch all of these guys pick up the blitz. Here come the blitzing guys. And the, look at they just zone block right in the middle. Almost get to Hasselbeck, but he gets the ball back out to the outside to Patrick Johnson. They pick up nine. Sammy Knight just didn't stand a chance because Tim got the ball out of his hand so quickly. Second and less than a yard. Chad Morton comes in as the deep back. Hasselbeck calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. This has given the Redskins problems all year. Flea flicker. Hasselbeck. Too strong and dropped. Patrick Sertan trips over his own feet. <laughs> oh, Patrick. Patrick's got the ball coming to him. This was a mistake, and Sean Wooden, uh, number 22, was back there. And Sam Madison was the guy who would bang into his own player and couldn't hold it. Oh, my. They got a flea flicker going. Now, he just hangs this up for Gardner, and Sam Madison's running with him. He's trying to avoid Sertan and lets it go off his finger. Three out of six on third down for the Redskins, who have not been really good moving the chains on the ground, but they are this time. You know what's amazing? They ran a flea flicker into a blitz, and it worked. 
I mean, he threw the ball to the wrong guy, but they held off the blitz and run a flea flicker. That tells you how good the offensive well, line is blocking. Normally speaking, in most offenses, play action passes are the best protection you can get because it, you force the linebackers to hesitate for a second and it allows the backs to pick up. That time it worked out pretty well. Matter of fact, so far since Tim Hasselbeck has gone, and this is the best protection I've seen from this offensive line all year. Sometimes the backup comes in and the linemen know they have to do just that much more. Morton inside the 20, inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Finally brought down by Madison. They are gash in the middle. Oh, the man, I'll tell you, you talk about blocking up in the middle of this offensive line. Watch the hole here for Morton. Boom, runs and gets back to the inside. There's just really nobody there. The linebackers are gone. They end up back with Sam Madison, number 29, who is a right corner making the tackle. 27-yard gain for Chad Morton. He has carried the ball three times for 42 yards. Seau shows blitz and comes with it. another flanker screen to Johnson. This time the Dolphins are all over it. it Steve Spurrier has always been somewhat of a gunslinger when it comes to calling plays. He likes to spread it around. We've seen him on second and short twice tonight go down the field with big plays. He's not bashful. Last week against Carolina and in previous games, he'll go for it on fourth and two, back up in his own end. It's hard to get a feel on where he's coming, but right now he's in a heck of a rhythm. Now the Redskins will use a timeout facing a second and long at the Miami 16-yard line. Hasselbeck doing a heck of a job coming in for the injured Ramsey. Often defense that leads the NFL in points against. Only 14.7 points a game. They're also best in the NFL against the rushing attack. Only 3.1 a carry. And right now the Redskins ignoring those statistics. Blitz coming. Hasselbeck. Inside the 15, 10 slides to the 5. Now that's something that a quarterback has to do from time to time. You've got to take off and run. But what I really like about Tim Hasselbeck is there's no hesitation. When you get closer to the goal line, you've got to be decisive. He goes back. Nice job by Trunk Candidate coming up and making the block. There he goes down and slides to pick up the first down. All right, now you're talking about blocking. you got John Jansen, 76, on a Goulier right here. Watch this. The Prince hit him in the mouth, but he stayed with him. Hasselbeck picks up the first down. They're at the five. Great scramble by Hasselbeck. Morton. Force Collard may have lost a yard. We have seen this so many times. Obviously, Patrick Ramsey has great talent. He has a brilliant future in this league. But Hasselbeck is getting an audition tonight. If he can't play in the future for the Redskins, he's showing he's going to be able to play for somebody in the NFL. Oh, he'll play for the Redskins. There's a flag on the field, and there's also Chris Samuels, number 60, the left tackle is on the field. And they are already missing a couple of starters on that offensive line, and now a flag against the defense. Unnecessary roughness. Well, this was a way away from the play. Samuels, a pro bowler the last two years out of Alabama, the first round draft choice in 2000. They can ill afford to lose him. Dave Fiore already on the injured reserve list with a knee injury. Larry Moore, who had been the center, is down tonight. And Samuels in obvious distress. Here's Johnny Greer. No, it's not, Mike. No. Well, there is Johnny Greer, but he's just not saying anything. Well, he is, but he's not talking to us. Junior say how Dave, Dave Wanstead has talked about just how important he's been to the attitude of this ball club. Number 60 is the left tackle, Samuels. We just see what happens to him. Ooh, it's, it's, it just looked like his right leg collapsed. Now, here's the penalty. T-Buck. 
face. <laughs> well, he and Patrick Johnson both have their hands jammed in each other's face mask. I don't know how you can only call one penalty. Well, because they caught him last. That's right. They last, were doing it for 10 seconds. Last, last one to poke <laughs> it in the eye. Last guy to get poked in the eye is the guy that winds up getting a penalty in his favor. Brandon Whiney, a first-year player out of LSU, a free agent, gets to come in and try to block Jason Taylor, the all-pro defensive end. And they don't get the snap off before the two-minute warning. In front of a stunned crowd in Miami, the Redskins with a six-point lead. Three minutes in television. His halftime heroes are Sunday Stud Update and LeVar Arrington Wired. All that coming up on the Kia Halftime Show. The current drive has gone 77 yards behind Tim Hasselbeck. This will be the 11th play of the drive coming. They've reached the Miami three. Two minutes to go in the half. Trung Candidate running hesitantly for maybe a yard. This is really what the Redskins lack, is a hammer in short yardage situations. Rock Cartwright is down with a bad ankle. Liddell Betts, another big bat for them, not active tonight. They've really got Chad Morton, Trunk Candidate, two guys that are quicker than they are more powerful. So I think if you're going to do something down here, maybe some play action would be for Tim Hasselbeck the right, situa the right situation. Second and goal. Candidate cuts it back, touchdown! That was easy. That was easy. Take your speed outside. The first rushing touchdown for the Redskins in seven games. They're playing like a very inspired football team. Watch this, pitch it out to the right side. Caught the Dolphins with everybody trying to come in. Zach Thomas gets cut down and Trunk Candidate's just got an easy road to the touchdown. Or do they the have some blocking on the outside? John Jansen, Randy Thomas. I mean, they just blocked so beautifully outside. That was an easy cutback. Steve Spurrier has taken so much grief for his play calling. Let's give him some credit for this. The play calling in this first half has been absolutely brilliant for the Washington Redskins. And they're up 20 to 7. Monday Night Countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. The best place to get ready for Monday Night Football then on ABC at 9, the Monday Night Game. Tiki Barber and the Giants against Warren Sapp and the Bucks. You know what I really, really loved about uh, Spurrier talking to me yesterday with Joe Hesper. He says, what are you going to do against this defense? He said, well, we're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And you know what? He's <laughs> done it. They're doing a little bit yeah. of this. He's done it. He's done a little bit of run, a little bit of pass. I mean, it's been a real nice balance for them. Right now, the Dolphins have to look at this possession as a season because New England won today. They catch a break with Denver losing. They have got to keep pace as far as I'm concerned, for an AFC wildcard berth in the AFC if they want to stay alive with this tonight. This drive, if they can take a two-minute drive or a minute, 24-second drive, get some points on the board, it'll get them feeling better going into the locker room. Washington is one of only two NFL teams that have not allowed a single point in the last two minutes of either half. Well, the Dolphins have three timeouts in a minute, 24. They got to go up top. Tim Hasselbeck Fly. was just talking to Patrick Ramsey. I don't think Patrick heard him. I don't. I think you're right. I think Patrick's having a conversation inside his head right now with somebody else. Travis Miner will let this one bounce into the end zone. We'll take it there. Ricky Williams and LeVar Arrington facing each other tonight in a regular season game for the first time ever. And LeVar is wired. You know we're here. Job, you know we're here tonight. Come on, Ricky's. Yeah. Hey, fix that helmet, Rick. Fix that helmet. I see you, Trap. All day long, Rick. I see you, Trap. With the real Ricky, please stand up. <laughs> Whoa. With the real Ricky. Talking a little smack, huh? In your face. Brian Greasy starts from his own 20. Good protection, sidearms it to Ricky Williams. 
and gets out of bounds to 26 to stop the clock with 118, 117 to go. That's Ricky's 35th reception. He has been a big part of this pass offense, but if they want to really get some points on the board, they're going to have to start including their wide receivers. I'll tell you one thing, right? This, this guy, Ricky Williams, he does not back down. Oh, no. Now, you're not going to intimidate him, and I don't care how many times you hit him or what you say to him. And he gets stronger as the game goes on. Chambers and Thompson both with no catches tonight. They're wide receivers. Here comes the blitz. Harrington coming. This pass completed up to the 34. McKnight, who caught the 80-yarder, grabs that one. You got, you got three timeouts. Take one of them. That's okay. Now the officials will stop the clock. They want to see if it's a catch. They're going upstairs. They will review the play as called on the field. Well, that saves them taking a timeout. <laughs> Under two minutes, the coaches cannot challenge. It's up to the replay official upstairs, and he used that prerogative. Now, what you want to do if you're Brian Greasy, because the clock would start again if they once they mark the ball ready for play after Johnny Greer's done with his business, is you call the play in the huddle, you get everybody up to the line of scrimmage, and you get ready to snap the ball as quickly as it's marked ready for play. You don't lollygag around in a huddle. You get up to the line of scrimmage, save yourself five or six seconds. Pass was completed pass. Thank you, John. That was quick. Pretty Johnny nice. Greer manages a game as well as anybody who has ever done that official's job. Right, is this a catch? Is that a catch? That ball hits the ground. But he that's still has possession of it, I think. I don't think ball, it moved around. The I ball think it can, the it can touch the ground as long as he has control. And the I, question is, did he have control? I think so. What do you think, Paul? I don't think so. Uh-oh. I get the tiebreaker again? What a shot. What do you think, man? I think he did. I don't think you can overturn it because the call on the field was a catch. Very good, good Michael. There you go, Michael. See, you're learning the rule. Here it is. Now, see so if the ball moves. Watch the nose of the ball. Okay. He's got it. Got the ball. Hits the ground. But it the doesn't. Ball. Now. It's, the ball is moving. It and is they not. say if the ball is moving, the ball is on the ground. No, I think it's a catch. But you yeah, know what? Well, I two like, to one. I like the I fact. Win. Two to one, we win again. I like the fact that you're convicted to your disbelief. What did he say? But we don't get the final vote, do we? Do you know what? Do you have any idea what he just said? I try to ignore it. <laughs> After reviewing the play, the play stance is called on the field. We have a completed catch. And as usual, Joe and I are right. Thank you, Mike. Good try, Paulo. Yeah, I was close. <laughs> came in second that's not real good on yes or no's <laughs> it is your first down for Miami at its own 34 56 seconds to go they could use something to give them a lift here Greasy scrambling out of the pocket he'll take off across the 40 to the 42 I want to tell you and was hit out of bounds not very hard but he was touched I want to tell you something I have a problem with what they did on that particular play it took them 10 seconds to snap the football after it was marked for play 10 seconds it took them and they still have three timeouts that LeVar Arrington coming from the outside. Look at him moving down the line of scrimmage. You know, we talked to him. Look at it. He went after Greasy. LeVar Arrington says, I have it all. I can rush the passer. I can play run. And I can cover. I do it all. And he's right. Here he comes again. Greasy to Williams. He wants to get out of bounds and does the 47-yard line. See, I think now what you can do is Brian Greasy has run to the sidelines. Ricky Williams has run a couple times. You now have this Redskin defense stretched sideline to sideline. You have three timeouts. Now you can throw the football in the middle of the field. You try and get a Rondé Gatson who's been activated and is now back on this roster. You try and get Darius Thompson. Or you try and get Chris Chambers into the middle of the field. Gracie now five out of seven, 109 yards passing. Steps up under pressure, throws on the run, hits another one down to the 38-yard line. That one's caught by Darius Thompson, the former Redskins, and a timeout for Miami. Do you know that Greasy went to Johnny Greer five seconds ago and said timeout when Johnny Greer was waiting for the play to stop? While we have a second, let's check in with Chris Berman. Boomer, what do you have? 
All right, Michael, thank you. At halftime, the fastest three minutes, we need the fastest three hours to show you the overtime games, like the ones between the Ravens and Seahawks, the Patriots and the Houston Texans, and St. Louis and Arizona. Our halftime heroes, plenty of them from that Baltimore-Seattle game. We're chock full of stuff. All right, Chris, you wonder, you watch the scores come in, you just wonder what's going on. How about Dave McGinnis with that, with the Arizona Cardinals? I mean, I think season career. So we look ahead to the second half of the Redskins leading 20 to 10 for the Miami Dolphins. What is your game plan? What do you do on offense? Do you stay conservative or what? Well, I don't think you stay conservative, Mike. I'll take the Dolphins here because he wants to. He's fighting you over the Redskins. I don't. Could have sworn I said what, Paul? But... I know, but I'm going there. I, I think what you do is you do what you did in the first half. I think you run Ricky. You don't take him out of the game, but you've got to get the ball down the field to your wide receivers. Give Chris Chambers and Darius Thompson a chance to make some plays. James McKnight again. Chad Morton will return the kickoff here in the third quarter, and Morton wrapped up inside the 20. Moments ago, Susie caught up with Dave Wanstead. Dave, an uncharacteristic night for your defense. How much more difficult is it to play against an unknown quantity like Tim Hasselbeck? Well, you know, what they're doing on offense is, is nothing that, uh, you know, if you draw it up, we haven't seen before. I mean, it's, I mean, they're, they're just, we had some bad field position early on, and then we give up a cheap touchdown. I mean, they're, they, they had us off balance a little bit, you know, with the run and the pass, and uh, we just got to come up and make a couple plays on defense. You know, we haven't come up with the interception, and we haven't come up with the big sack which we generally have we need to get out here and we need to get back to basics i mean it's going to be blocking and tackling and that's what we're not doing a good enough job of thanks coach paul let me ask you about the redskins what do you do in the second half just keep trying to do the same thing can i do this joe okay yeah what, Go ahead. what they, he's not gonna i don't think Spurry's gonna pull the reins in on this guy you gotta let him just play the way he played the first half if anything if anything i i would think that the Spurry is gonna let this guy throw the ball more downfield than he did in the first half from the 20-yard line. Hasselbeck out in the flat and just off the fingertips of Darnarian McCants. Hasselbeck, who has been with this team for a month, most of his background is in the uh, short passing area, which the Redskins don't run, although they have tonight. He's 11 out of 15, 106 yards and a touchdown, and has scrambled effectively twice. And the thing about him is, though, he and we saw him yesterday, he is very, very calm. Third and nine. Blitz coming. Can't, uh, the draw play goes to Chad Morton, and Morton brought down shy of the 25 by Junior Seau. Good hustle play on the veterans' part. That's exactly what you look for from your defense to start the second half. The defense has been the spark plug of the Miami Dolphins all year. They've done their job. Now the Dolphin offense should get reasonably good field position. They're going to have to do something with it to, to turn momentum in their favor in this game. Parker will kick to Simmons, who waits back at his own 30-yard line. Low line drive kick. Simmons from the 36. And stoned as he got to the 48-yard line. Lamar Marshall down to make the tackle. Now it's up to Brian Greasy, down by 10, third quarter. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. Guinness Draft Stout, enjoyed responsibly the world over. And Porsche. Porsche, there is no substitute. Aerial views tonight, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company, with us Goodyear's Blimp Stars and Stripes, and at the controls, Captain Dan Thomas from Pompano Beach. <laughs> Dolphins first and 10 on 48-yard line, down 20 to 10. And Arrington got a quick start. This was knocked away from Conrad as Ronaldo Wynn drops out in coverage. We're going to have two flags on this play. One's going to be pass interference also. LeVar Harrington is offside, of but this guy said to us there are egos at stake tonight because of all of the all-pro linebackers. LeVar Harrington, do you think he is a possessed? Look at this guy. He's after Ricky Williams. Gets him there. Gets him there. Watch his movement back to the other side. Gets him. I'll tell you what. 
That was Travis Minor, the last guy hit. But this guy is all over the field. He just, I mean, you, one thing he said to us yesterday, which is all players should have, and that's heart. He said, I play with heart. Williams off the right side, stuffed as he got one to the Redskins 46 yard line. Well, things started off very well for the Miami Dolphins. Couldn't have been any better. Three plays, 88 yards, and a touchdown. Then, yikes, nothing until that last drive in the two minute drill that resulted in a field goal. Second and four, blitz coming. Williams takes it outside, cuts back. 40, 37-yard line for Ricky Williams and a first down Dolphins. Boy, Rob Conrad got a great block, Joe, on LeVar Arrington. He saw him come up, and Rob Conrad just takes him on. Look at number 44. Bam! They hit there. Here he comes again. He takes LeVar Arrington, just runs him out of the hole. Ricky Williams cuts back inside and picks up the first down. Hey, North Turner, the offensive coordinator of the Dolphins, is just calling his game. He realizes it's still a close game, and Ricky Williams is his guy that has to keep this offense moving. Greasy, nice play fake. Still looking for somewhere to go. Gets away from Wynn and dives for a couple of yards inside the 35-yard line. See, just like we saw Tim Hasselbeck down around the goal line do that with uh, for the Redskins, these are the kind of things that Brian Greasy has to do more. That's what they miss when Jay Fiedler's not a part of this offense. Jay Fiedler, for example, has had 18 carries this year for 70 yards. Brian Greasy has had three carries for four yards up until that particular play. It's important that a quarterback move around, make plays with his legs. Aranda gets to number 86, has checked into the ballgame, signed this week. He hasn't played in a regular season game in over a year. He is an excellent receiver. He's not going to beat too many people deep most of the time, but he has wonderful hands and is a big target. Lionel Dalton on the, on the uh, tackle that time, the big guy in the middle. The Redskins' defensive front, Pepe Zellner was added late, Daryl Russell was added late, Lionel Dalton was added late. I mean, they've, had, they've had somewhat of a shuffle on the inside uh, all year. There's only two guys out of nine defensive linemen that have been here more than 10 games in a Redskin uniform. They lost Dan Wilkinson and Daryl Gardner, who were the tackles a year ago. Blitz coming, Greasy throws. And it's complete down to the 25-yard line to Aranda Gadsden, who gets a tremendous hand. You know, when you just talked about him with great hands, now here is a guy that will go inside and catch the ball. He's a big target. He's got excellent concentration on the ball. And that pass by Greasy had to be perfect. The only reason he's able to get this off is watch the pickup of Ricky Williams, number 34. You saw him on the left side of your screen on the block. Ricky Williams does a terrific job. Boy, and Champ Bailey was right there at the moment the ball got there, but couldn't prevent Gadsden from making the catch. You know you're going to get hit, so you might as well catch it anyway. Play action again by Greasy, going for the end zone. And this one picked off by Bauman. Rashad Bauman with his second pick of the season snuffs out the drive on a pass that was underthrown. What? He was in Chris Chambers' hip pocket all the way across the field. The play action fake comes. Rashad Bauman just jumps in and snatches it out of the air. Access NFL.com to vote. Behind Chambers, and the ball was intercepted after a good drive. But that first drive is still the one they're thinking about. Redskins take over at the three. Grow to the gun game. Absolutely nothing there. Ryan Gracie tries a little play action fake on that last series. You see it. They're lined up in a slot to the left side. That's Rashad Bauman. You're going to see Chris Chambers just go across the field. Doesn't really help out the quarterback much with the move. And there's the ball going down the field that Bauman just jumps. Should be a clear out. Bauman just hangs in. You got to give credit to the defense every now and then. That was a heck of a defensive play on a trailer. Trunk Canada has run the ball 14 times tonight, 11 of them for one or two yards. This one he breaks to the outside. 
steps out of bounds across the 20. It's a first down. Well, this is what happens when you get your whole defense and they're on the goal line and you've got a, a, a brand new quarterback in there. You figure he's not going to throw, so we're going to jam everything in the middle. And what happens is they let Tron Kennedy bounce it back to the outside. This is all Tron Kennedy. Watch this. Boom. Back to the outside. Zach Thomas misses. Nobody is out there. Sam Madison, number 29, is a corner. He's responsible for turning that thing back to the inside. He doesn't do that. Trunk Kennedy picks up a first down. Now Steve Spurrier can open up his offense a little bit, throwing the ball. Blitz coming. Flanker screen to Coles. Gets a block and gets up to the 28-yard line. Lavernius Coles is one of the guys that was added in the offseason by Daniel Snyder. They went out and got Randy Thomas at the right guard, Coles at the flanker, Trunk Kennedy at halfback, and Chad Morton at halfback. And on this one, you see Coles just jump inside. This is the third quick screen they've run tonight. One of those four free agent additions to the offense. It's interesting. Miami adds four guys all on defense. Washington adds four guys. Of course, this one here with 59 receptions, all on offense. That's the personality of the coaches reflected in that. Candidate on the delay. Up near the 34. Let's go to Susie. Well, Mike, Lavernius Coles got off to such a hot start this season and then cooled. But while a lot of top receivers in the league make waves, asking for the ball, he's told me before the game his role is to be there for the coaches, deal the tough questions about what's been wrong with the offense. He says he's got their back. His role is to stay positive, no complaining, no whiling. Last month, he was actually critical of himself, went to the coaches and said, I know I can play better. The quarterbacks call him their pit bull. Well, that's a pleasant change, isn't it? Well, you know what? He he has brought toughness to this offense. One little receiver brought toughness. Candidate again to the 41-yard line. Trunk Candidate was a first-round draft choice of the St. Louis Rams, and Mike Martz, I'll never forget the story, he said he hand-timed him in 4-2, and it just took his breath away. But Tron Candidate had multiple opportunities in St. Louis and eventually was demoted to third string running back, then was available to the Redskins in a draft, and they in, a, in a trade, rather. Really. Marts wanted him because he liked speed, and he felt like on that surface, Tron Candidate could be the guy in case something would happen to Martin. Second and three, Morton comes in, tries to turn it outside, does turn the corner and has the first down. You know, speed can bury you. I'm going to tell you right now. Sam Madison found out what speed is. Chad Morton just runs. Look at Sam Madison. Right. Yeah, nice play. Uh huh. He just watches. this. You want to see what speed does? Watch speed. Speed. Outside. First down. One thing I've always noticed about the Miami Dolphin defense, when you get Zach Thomas blocked and he can't go sideline to sideline, people run the football against him. The Redskins are doing an excellent job of blocking number 54 all night. First down, Washington. And Hasselbeck has to use a timeout. The Redskins leading in Miami 20 to 10, third quarter. Throwing a surprise to the Miami Dolphins. And they couldn't be more surprised by seeing Tim Hasselbeck in a quarterback. Both backups playing tonight. Greasy, the scheduled starter, because Fiedler is not yet 100% healthy. Hasselbeck comes in because Patrick Ramsey was hurt early. Morton caught by Junior Seau. See, now that's what, that's what the Miami Dolphins have to do, is they have to get their linebackers involved in blitzes. You better block this guy, folks. Number 55, Junior Seau. Now, you, you know, when you see this guy come across, this is experience. Guys will run by. Junior Seau with his experience, first he checks the runner, then you go to the quarterback. He took the runner, Chad Morton. You think there's still a little gas in the tank? What? I think, you think he isn't? Look at this guy. He is always on go. See, now, even though you've done five defensive backs, six defensive backs, you still have to blitz them. Second and 12. They come with a four-man rush. Hasselbeck throws under pressure. What and a caught at the 48-yard line. Darnarian McCants with a circus catch. Tim Hasselbeck threw this one out of a pothole. Yes, he did. Watch the pocket. Good job by the line. They, he just hangs this up out, and you look at the catch. One-handed, 
Now, I, you know what? They ought to take a look at that. You know what the official said is he was forced out of bounds. He made the signal on the sideline. Then, it was a catch and forced out. And that is not reviewable. Thank you, Michael. Well, you know these non-reviewable babies, don't you? That was some catch, though. Oh. Now they're going to do something. Now Johnny Greer is going to go over and explain to him exactly what Mike he's going to say. You can't challenge this, so don't bother throwing the flag. Now you, if possession. you're a lip reader, you can see Johnny Greer saying that was a force out. Yeah, he's saying the possession is reviewable, but the force out is not. Okay, so Dave says forget it then. Forget it. There is no challenge on the play. Well, I, I just love doing a game that Johnny Greer does. He's terrific. I mean, he explains things. He, I, he really does a terrific job, I think, as an official and his entire crew because they keep them all together now. Patrick Ramsey right now on the sideline looking a little more animated than he did earlier in the ball game. That's a color back. Yes. Third and five facing the Redskins from the Miami 48. Shotgun. Hasselback trying to escape. Throws on the run and got it complete to Brian Johnson. Holy cow, are you kidding? There's a flag on the play back at the 50-yard line. Even if this comes back. A legal man downfield. What a remarkable play by Hasselbeck. Yeah, and when you look at it, and I know we're going to see it, is that and he just went downfield. Number 77, offense. That's Randy we'll Thomas. Replay third down. But I'll tell you what he does. You watch him get his shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage, and that's why he can make this throw. Here comes Tim Hasselbeck to the outside. Now, watch him turn and get himself square. Once he gets himself around, now that ball is downfield. That's a beautiful throw, man. Joe, you used to be so good at running to your left and throwing. That's got to be the hardest thing a quarterback can do. It is the hardest thing, but he and Paul brought it up very well. Once you get your shoulders and hips turned, it's no more different than throwing to the right when you're stepping. But when you turn your shoulders, you slow yourself down. That 300 guy, the 300 pound guy is trying to kill you is right in your face. It's a little interesting. This time, Jason Taylor has Hasselbeck. There is a flag down in the secondary, however. No, no, it's a flag down. It's probably going to be a face mask against Jason Taylor. There's a flag in the secondary also. They got them all over. We got a flag at the quarterback. I was just ready to say the Redskins offensive line done a great job against a Gunley A. We have two fouls on the play. The lab game, offense. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. Wait a minute. By rule, the 15-yard penalty will be enforced. Now, wait a second. Wait, delay How can you have you delay a game? Play. That means that the play was never run. You cannot run. If you have delay a game, the whistle blows and the play can't be run. See, I would, I would definitely agree with Paul. If there's a delay a game, that means that the snap never got off on time, which means quite simply that the personal foul could have never occurred after that. Okay, here comes well, Jason Taylor on the outside, and he's going up against Whiny. He and the Goulier, uh, Goulier work out and hit right at the, at, the, at, the, uh, at the quarterback. I think what the call is going to be is for an illegal substitution, which is technically a delay of game. You would have been right if the play clock ran out. Then the play never started. Redskins run a sweep this time for a couple. But an illegal substitution is referred to in the rule book as a delay of game. Then they That's why to, they referred to it that then way. Then they ought to change that and make it more clear. We just did. Okay. Even if there is a whistle, a personal foul is always enforced after a play. And the Dolphins just continue to make one mistake after another and give the Redskin offense life. And Tim Hasselbeck is making them pay for it. And I'll tell you another thing, this defense is getting tired. They're not used to being out there this long. Hasselbeck under pressure, and that was Terrell Buckley. Another big play from t -Buck. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you big play is Tim Hasselbeck. He found Trunk Kennedy coming out in the screen, and he got the ball in his feet. 
Now Terrell Buckley is making the blitz. Here he comes. They don't they don't block him. But look at Hasselbeck. He hits him, but he gets the ball back to the line of scrimmage. I don't know that I have ever seen a guy like Tim Hasselbeck when we talked to him in our meeting thrown three passes in his entire career. You would have thought you were talking to somebody who's been doing this for 10 years but as a starter. Paul made a great point. He practiced all week. Patrick Ramsey did not, so he had a comfort level about what he was doing. Cole's in motion. They'll blow, blow this play dead. That's as much as I appreciate you saying he practiced all Delay. week. Offense. This is his second career game. A couple things in his favor. First of all, you're going up against a defense that doesn't do a lot, a lot of movement, so the offensive line is going to give you a little more protection. Secondly, Steve Spurrier has modified his play calling so there aren't as many audibles, so it doesn't become that difficult. Keep in mind, Tim Hasselbeck is not wearing a cheat sheet on his arm. These things are being called in by Coach Spurrier. He's communicating them to the team. He's a pretty bright kid. Third and 13. Hasselbeck throws. Knocked away at the last moment by Sertan. He had Darnarian McCants. It looked like a good throw. But Sertan, who was one of the best, as is his entire secondary, knocked it away. Well, they went with a three-man rush, and Jason Taylor and the Goulier both got back there. He only had time to throw that ball that fast. Seems like every time the Dolphins go to a three-man rush, the Redskin offensive line's confused who to block, and there's pressure on the quarterback. Barker to kick to Kendall Newsom. And Newsom muffs it. The Redskins have it. Dave Wanstead is standing on the sidelines in total disbelief of what he is seeing. How do you blame a coach for the kind of things that are happening? Kendall Newson, who had had problems catching the ball in the passing game, has a problem catching it as a punt returner, took his eyes off of it, and the Redskins, Zeron Flemister, the tight end with the recovery, a huge break. That was also a knuckleball that came down. The Redskins right back in business. And Hasselbeck to throw for the end zone. Incomplete off the hands of Rod Gardner. I'll tell you what, this ball is perfectly thrown. Rod Gardner's in the air. Hasselbeck, you know, if, if you just tuned in and you're watching this guy play, you think this guy's been playing for a long time. Look where he puts this ball. Gardner, this is up in the air. Terrell Buckley does was there. Doesn't the even. Ball. No. Doesn't even get a hand on it. Look at, Look at this. That ball is absolutely thrown perfectly. I don't know if he'd have gotten in bounds or not. Well, he hasn't had many bad ones. He's been right on it. Steps up, throws sidearm. Morton to the six. He is throwing him from all angles to all receivers. Now the tackles are doing an excellent job. What they're doing is they're running Jason Taylor and Agunlier around the cup. And Tim Hasselbeck just continues to step up. This is a guy that is in total control of everything he does. He looks down the field. Now he sees his outlet man out to the right. Chad Morton makes the catch, picks up the first down. You've got a backup quarterback. You have a backup left tackle in Brandon Whiney, who's got to face Jason Taylor. Morton hitting the backfield. And Junior just came flying in. There's another example of Junior Seau going to the back first and then go to the quarterback second. Junior Seau, this is experience. A lot of guys overrun this thing. Watch him cut back down inside. He locates the ball is what he does. Then the ball is in the running back. He goes right to the running back. Has there ever been anybody more fun to watch in this game than Junior? A couple guys that are just as much fun, Ray Lewis, LeVar Arrington, and Junior. Hasselbeck. And that one overthrown for Rod Gardner, who was covered perfectly. If the Miami Dolphin defense can stop the Redskins from scoring a touchdown here, it just becomes a simple two-touchdown game for them. They had a good drive through the third quarter, got down there when Greasy let it get away. Excuse me. But they can do it. Simple. I 
think so. <laughs> simple two touchdown game? Not really. <laughs> but sort of simple. Boy, it's been less than simple. Well, it would or be simpler than, simple. than 27 to 10. Third down. Four wide receivers for Hasselbeck. Three man rush. Draw play. Morton. To the three, there is a flag down. Offside Miami. Holy cow. The only thing that works in their favor, it's going to be half the distance to the goal. And it's still going to be third down. And this is a veteran unit that is killing itself with mistakes. And Dave wants that, I'm guessing, is going to change quarterbacks once they get the football back. Jay Fiedler worked a lot this week in practice, and I think this football team needs a spark. Brian Greasy was at the sideline talking with Jay Fiedler. Offside, 99, defense. We'll penalize half the distance, still third down. That's two offside calls against Jason Taylor. There is Jay Fiedler. He's been out with a bad left knee. You know, this is what happens when you're on defense and you're trying to win the football game and you know your offense is struggling, so you're just trying to get that extra jump and you hurt yourself. Morton will go out as a wide receiver. This one's tipped incomplete, intended for Flemister. Steve Spurrier is trying to call a timeout. He just, there he is, trying to call timeout. Timeout, timeout. Nobody's looking at the coach. Well, the offense has his back to him, so they're... Well, I don't understand. Lavernius Cole is not in the game. You got Chad Morton out at wide receiver, and Flemister at the other wide receiver, down around the goal line? I'm a little confused on that. And I think Tim is as well. But I'll tell you what he didn't do is make a mistake and give the ball up. John Hall, who has hit two short-range field goals, will try another one just 22 yards. And got it through, and the Redskins increased their lead to 23 to 10 in a game that is just flying by here in Miami. 10 late third quarter to the Washington Redskins. And can you believe this? The Redskins with 119 yards rushing. The Dolphins only give up 85 a game. The Dolphins have only rushed for 71. They have one of the best ground games in the league. Time of possession, nearly two to one, and the score is 23 to 10. Travis Minor deep to receive, and Hall kicks it two yards deep. Minor across the 20, 25 near the 29 yard. Offside by the Redskins. Pretty good return out to the 29. Offside, number 48 of the kicking team. It's declined. We'll see if the Dolphins change from Greasy to Fiedler when we come back. The timeout to probably the biggest ovation he has ever heard since he's been the Miami Dolphins quarterback. 33 and 15, his overall record. One of those wins came in Jacksonville. Now he is on to try to bail out the Dolphins offense. And the Redskins immediately come with a blitz. Fiedler with time, down the middle, Chambers with a one-handed catch. Chambers to the 40. Wow. Well, what a grab. First of all, that offensive line really gave him some time because Fiedler had a chance to step up and throw the football. Wow. You just need a little spark. Look at this. Look at the time he has, and the Redskins were in a blitz. What a tremendous catch by Chris Chambers. Wow. This guy's a tremendous athlete. 45-inch vertical jump. They get the playoff just before the quarter ends. Chambers on the end around. Champ Bailey takes his legs out from under him at the 33. That's the end of the third quarter as Jay Fiedler tries to bring the Dolphins back. It's 23-10.
high definition, a remarkable picture. You can watch next Sunday night's football game, Tampa Bay and Jacksonville in HD. ESPN HD is now available nationwide. And check out the entire ESPN HD schedule at ESPN.com. But don't leave this. We've got a Hummer here. I'll tell you, this is a good humdinger coming here. Ricky Williams, 13 carries, 51 yards. This is 14. And Ricky had a couple of games in a row when he was down in the low teens in carries. And it was a lot like this game. They fell behind, so they had to throw the ball more. This guy's numbers may be down. He's only averaging on the year 3.3 yards a carry, but he is running just as hard as he always has. They've had problems on the offensive line. People are playing eight and nine men in the box against him, and he is earning every yard of it. First and 10, Conrad in motion. Play action, Fiedler. Throws underneath and caught by McKnight and out of bounds. Let's go to Susie. Mike, I watched Jay Feather getting himself ready on the sideline during that last series. Bouncing around, Brian Greasy came up, gave him a pat on the back and said good luck. Jay walked down the line, patting everybody's hand on his offense. He told me before the game his knee felt great and he was just dying to get in there. Well, he's in and he's moving the team, Susie. The last completion to McMichael. Critical game for both of these teams. Miami to improve itself in the standings. The Redskins simply to stay alive, and they're playing like it. Blitz coming. Draw play. Williams. Arrington was there to assist on the tackle as Ricky got to the 22. Jeremiah Trotter was the first guy to hit him. Jay Fiedler has been working on a brace. LeVar Arrington, and they've got a couple of couple of linebackers. They said there are five all-pro linebackers in this game. LeVar Arrington, 56. You think he doesn't know where Ricky is? Look at this. And the guy on the bottom is, is Jeremiah Trotter. These two guys, I mean, you got linebackers, you got all-pro linebackers all over the like place. Linebacker youth. It is. Looks like Penn State out there. All three of the Redskins linebackers have been to the Pro Bowl. Fiedler from the shotgun. Blitz coming. Perfect throw. First down at the 24-yard line. Another strike to Chambers. Jay Fiedler finally has found a brace that is comfortable for him. I talked to the trainer, Kevin O'Neill, and that's what they've been trying to do. Remember, it's on his left foot, so at least he can plant and deliver it. It doesn't look like he has any problems. Now, though, the last three times Chris Chambers has touched the ball have been three of the four times that he's gotten a hold of it all night. And he's a guy that you just have to keep involved in the offense. Gonna blow this one dead and it will cost Miami five Bradford yards. Snap. Ball start. Number 68. Offense. Still first down. Seth McKinney, the second year center, who is playing guard because of injuries to Jamie Nails and Todd Perry. Well, what Jay Feeler tried to do is get these guys up on the line of scrimmage. Look, at he's three for three in this drive, but he tried to get them up and go on a, on a quick count. And they, their own man went too soon. Well, remember, that's five weeks he hasn't played, Paul. So, again, you're changing the snap count a little bit with a new quarterback. First and 15. Williams goes in motion. Empty backfield. Fiedler throws, knocked away by Arrington. The intended target was McMichael. Remember I said he's a complete player. Not only can he rush the passer, not only can he cover the pass, and not only get uh, the run. LeVar Arrington, this is on the tight end, McMichael. Watch this play. Hmm. Hand inside, perfect coverage. And, and that pass was thrown right where it needed to be thrown, that's except LeVar Arrington got there first. That's as good as it gets. This guy is really special. I love he talked about having, he wanted a chip on his shoulder for tonight's game. He likes to be mad coming in. The chip on the shoulder was people thought that Ricky might be able to run against him. Fiedler straight back. This one knocked down. That was Trotter. I said they got all pro linebackers, all three of them. Jesse Armstead's the other guy, number 98. But these, Well, maybe they'll throw on his side next time. I'll tell you what, you talk about linebackers that are active in getting the job done. 
Remember, George Edwards is the defensive coordinator. He took over for Marvin Lewis, who you want to talk about coaches of the year in Cincinnati. They won again today, but he inherited a pretty good group of guys over there, especially at the linebacker position. Here's a question for you. If they don't make this third and long, do you kick a field goal? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. I think you've got at least three possessions in this quarter. You have to count on that. Fiedler on third and 15 for the end zone collision. That will be interference on the Redskins. And it's Oalete who banged into Chambers. Now Oalete will contend that pass was uncatchable. I don't think so. I mean, I really, Chambers doesn't really have a chance to get airborne to try no. and make the kind of catch. And Chambers has got a 45-inch vertical jump. That's interference. Number 26, defense in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. Oh, let's say he just gets there too soon. Look at Chambers. You can't say that this isn't catchable. That ball is up in the air. That's catchable. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's going for, he's not even going for the ball. He's going for the receiver against Randy McMichael. <laughs> and now will be first and goal. Williams, the deep man in the eye. Fiedler on play action. To the corner and incomplete. That was off the hands of Donald Lee, the second team tight end. Well, Donald Lee was coming out of the backfield, I mean, out, off the line of scrimmage, and they knocked him to the ground. They didn't, the, well, they, the Redskins, didn't allow anybody to get off the line of scrimmage. And Fiedler still almost completes his pass. Goes right through his hands. He would have probably not gotten that foot down but still, Jay's throwing the ball well. I think the next two plays, Ricky, running Ricky, plays for Ricky. Ricky. Look, Ricky, first Ricky, one should have been Ricky. Second and goal from the one. Conrad the up back. Williams. Bernard Holsey, number 90. Or, as some people might refer to him now, a brick wall. <laughs> yeah. Ricky just absolutely stopped. Watch number 90 get in the way. There it is. There's the wall oh. called Holsley. Look at that play. And, of course, Jeremiah Trider's got him down low. Well, you know, when you, when you watch something in slow motion, Joe, and you see their shoulder pads just kind of pop and cave in, you know you're getting smacked. It's a wall. Ricky's a big guy. Holsey outweighs him by about 70 pounds. Third and goal. Ricky, oh, drill. He's not in. It will be fourth and goal. Boy, Arrington, Mitchell. Kevin you Mitchell. About, you talk about some active linebackers. Now, fourth and inches. I think you got to go for it. Look at LeVar, Arrington, and Mitchell. You know what I would do? Here I, they are, 55, oh, I would 56. Call, I would call timeout. I really would. I think you can save it. If you get in here, you're only a touchdown down. I'd call timeout, talk it over. Now you're running down close to the 40-second uh, clock. The play clock's down to nine seconds. You're going to have to hurry to get to the line. i got to really hurry now. Ricky dives. Touchdown. That, that a is a statement play as well as a strategic play. What a great gutsy thing by Dave Wanstack to go for it. I mean, that was that was a second away from having to delay a game penalty. If you have guys, if you have Ricky Williams and you have first and goal at the one, you better not do anything but give it to Ricky Williams and get the touchdown. Look at him go airborne. Yeah, well, he, he got tired of running on the ground where they were <laughs> nailing him. He does get airborne. The point after, the Dolphins close to within six. 10-24 to go from Miami. There's light beer and Seiko. You can tell more about a person by the watch they wear than anything else. Seiko Artura Kinetic. Beautiful, colorful Miami, where the Redskins now lead by only six with 10 24 to go in the game. The Dolphins, with Jay Fiedler at quarterback, coming off the bench, goes 71 yards to score. Certainly one of the key plays in that drive, the pass interference call on Oalete in the end zone. And was that on third and 15? Third and 15. So it kept the drive alive. 
This one bounces into the end zone. The Redskins will keep it there and start from their own 20-yard line. 10-24 to go in a six-point ball game from Miami. They have. They have eaten the ball. That 34 looks small on this guy's shoulder. Redskins from the 20, and it has suddenly gotten very loud here. Hasselbeck batted down. Almost intercepted a Goodley. He got a hand on it. Let's go to Susie. The guys, you know, Ricky Williams thought he was going to be more elusive this season. He lost weight. He thought if he was quicker, he'd get less beat up. Not going to happen. He understands now he's going to have to get beat up for the Dolphins to win. He told us last night he knows he's going to have to sacrifice his body. A lot of anti-inflammatories after this game. Boy, he sacrificed it on those first and second and third and fourth and goal calls. End around. Coles. Nothing. You just get the sense that this Miami Dolphin defense is playing with a different purpose right now. The offense has invigorated them. As a matter of fact, this is what this offense, this football team has needed all year. It's something they've got to come up with to stop Steve Spurrier's offense. Now they're in a third and long situation again, the Redskins are. They've kept the plays very manageable for Tim Hasselbeck. If I was the, if I was Jim Bates, the defensive coordinator of the Dolphins, I would come after him. I would not give him a chance to drop back and throw the ball. When he has had time, he has been unflappable. Four-man rush. Complete in the first down. Patrick Johnson was open and Hasselback hustled the ball out of there. He just beat Sam Madison. Sam Madison is playing Patrick Johnson man-to-man, -man, and he got beat. Look at here. Patrick Johnson, 84. Look at this. Madison goes inside. Patrick stays outside. And the perfect throw. You know why? Because Sam Madison was looking at the quarterback. He was looking back at Tim Hasselbeck to see where the ball was, and it got out of his hand very quickly. It's hard to describe how good Hasselbeck has been. Candidate to about the 35. Tim Hasselbeck has been extremely efficient under 15 yards tonight. Look at his pass chart. Three out of seven left, two for two, seven out of 11 right. You see him one for four deep, but that's a real departure from what Steve Spurrier did earlier in the year. You would probably see a lot more numbers over 15 yards. Credit Steve Spurrier with a change in philosophy of getting the ball out of his quarterback's hands quicker. Second and six. Candidate straight up the middle, running hard. Sammy Knight, the strong safety, was there to meet him. I'll tell you one thing I think they're doing with this kid, Tim Hasselbeck, and they're putting him in a, in a tough position. They're running on first and second down and then forcing him to throw on third down. Hey, I don't, that's what you get paid for as a quarterback in the National Football League. This is, this is a moment that defines a quarterback. It's third and three. You have to have it. I promise you it's going to be a pass play. It's not going to be a run. Oh, I know that, but I'm just saying, there's a kid that has a play for it. I know you I live it. for these moments. Third and three. Dolphins showing blitz, and they come with it. Screen. Johnny Morton to the 47, broke a tackle and got the first down. And look at Hasselbeck. He, break, he breaks a tackle again of Sam Madison. Sam Madison has him stopped a yard short of that yellow line. Hasselbeck gets it off. Morton does a nice job. Now, he's got him stopped right there. Just tackle him. We saw Champ Bailey, the Redskin corner, make a terrific tackle. Chad Morton just runs right through Sam Madison's tackle, picks up the crucial first half. Boy, was Hasselbeck going backwards just as fast as those legs had taken. We had Terrell Buckley coming on a blitz, number 27, and he had to back up and back up and back up. Buckley was flying and couldn't get there. Play action on first down. Hasselbeck unloads. Coles can't hang on. Great coverage by Sertan. Well, they took their shot there. Hey, I, I like the way the old ball coach is calling this game. Here he is. He just puts it up. Hasselbeck throws. Now, he's counting on Coles to do one of two things. Make the catch or make sure Sertan doesn't. He almost comes down with this ball. Look at Patrick Sertan and Lavernius Coles fight. 
for that football. That's one of those passes where you throw the ball short because you got Sertan going deep. What a great piece of camera work that was. Just to see the effort these two put into it. Second and ten. Hassel back to Flemister down the middle, and he is leveled by Brock Marion. Boy, I'll tell you, Brock Marion. He's lucky, all, isn't he, Paul? Yeah, he almost got a 50. He almost got himself a flag. That was real close to getting yourself a flag for hitting an extended receiver. Here it is here. 31 is Marion. And, and, and the reason he doesn't get a flag, because he didn't go for his head. He hit him in the upper body. I think Flemister hit him. Here's another one of those defining moments. A field goal would be huge for the Redskins if they can get another couple of first downs. Jason Taylor chasing Hasselbeck. And he got him. Jason Taylor has been frustrated all year because of a lack of sacks. It's not that he has played poorly. He is such a focus, but he's had two tonight. He just goes right by Brandon Whiney. Look at the speed. Here is speed. Now, this guy's been on the field a long time. And Hasselbeck said, wait a minute. That's a defensive end, and I can't outrun him. He doesn't even have time to get the ball loaded to throw it away. Kendall Newson, who muffed the last one is back to receive this punt and an awful kick Shanker. off the side of the foot of brian barker 26 yard kick when he had a chance to pin them reasonably deep 629 to go miami down by a touchdown jay fiedler got them in the end zone last time Welcome to Miami, 23-17. Redskins by six. The defense for the Dolphins did its job. Now can Jay Fiedler do it again? Starting from his own 31, he wants to throw. With a man in his face, almost intercepted. Champ Bailey got his hands on it. And that time, Chambers turned defensive back and knocked it away as Lionel Dalton planted Fiedler. Boy, Lionel Dalton, number 95, he, he wasn't even slowed up. He came in, and Fiedler was lucky to get this ball off. Right in the middle of your screen, here comes 95. And that, ooh. Boy, was that a good job by Dalton. Look at this. He could have buried Fiedler and would have gotten himself a flag, but he didn't. He just grabs him, holds him up. Smart. Big old bear hug. Second and ten, draw to Williams. Oh, turns the corner. Oh, Champ Bailey got caught inside, and he's so mad at himself. How can a guy that big be that quick? Speed. Again, I should, with Morton, we talked about with Washington with speed. Champ Bailey, Joe is absolutely right. He gets himself caught inside. But watch his speed here. Speed kills, man. Yes, Champ it does. Watch Champ Bailey. He takes the wrong angle of pursuit. Second time we've seen a back, a defensive back for the Redskins, take the wrong pursuit, and the speed gets outside. 17-yard gain for Ricky Williams. He has 75 on 19 carries. Travis Miner replaces him on first and 10. Fiedler, quick out. Has the completion and out of bounds. McKnight, who caught the earlier 80-yard touchdown pass. One of the things that Brian Greasy talked about all year was he couldn't find a comfort level with the wide receivers. He played five years in Denver, was comfortable with Ed McCaffrey as well as Rod Smith. Here, he couldn't really get as comfortable. And now you see with Jay Fiedler, who's been with these receivers, you see the timing of their routes and the pass is much more crisp. It outside and minor inside the 35 to a 33 another first down what you're seeing is the defense and, and you, i blame this on the linebackers especially the outside linebackers they are just jamming everything in the middle because miami dolphins had a, sh a second in short yardage but watch here what minor does everybody is sealed inside he gets back to the outside. Trotter can't get there until after he gets the first down. So you're sort of taking advantage of the fact that LeVar Arrington is so quick to react, you start to go one way and make him chase the plays, right? I like it. Thank you. 
Williams is back in. First and 10 at the 33. Miami moving crisply downfield. Fiedler for the end zone. A lot of contact. No flag. Champ Bailey against Chambers. You've got two really good ones. Champ Bailey and All-Pro, and I think Chris Chambers is going to be one. This is just a flat go. They threw this in warm-ups, and Chambers had it land right in his lap. And there's just a case where I believe the ball was just a little too far overthrown. Champ by, Bailey got lucky, I think. Well, by turning his head around, I think he convinced the official that the contact was incidental. He was able to cut off the route just enough to make it incomplete. That's why he's a pro bowler. The last play, McMichael, number 81, was wide open. Blitz coming this time. Chambers will make the catch. Bailey with a saving tackle, gain of nine. I don't, I don't think that offensively, I don't think it's a coincidence that the Dolphin offense finally looks like it has some life. Because of Jay Fiedler, yes, but more importantly, because Dave Wanstead is getting the ball to Chris Chambers. You've got to let your stars be stars. Well, you got third. This is four down territory. And this is also Ricky Williams territory. I would think so. Up and over, Ricky. They're in the eye. Williams, first down. including the touchdown he's up to 99 for the night and he has put his club back on top Chad Morton a yard deep oh hesitated breaks outside Morton 30 Mate got a hand on him and takes him out of bounds. That's what the Redskins have missed all year was a big play on special teams. I want to show you what happened on that touchdown to Ricky Williams. It was a little bit of good blocking. You see, there's Jeremiah Trotter right in the middle of the middle linebacker. That's Olete, the uh, safety. They're both going to fill the same gaps. Coaches talk about defenses. Fill your gap. Don't two of you go to a gap. Watch what they do to try and stop the run. Both of them in a Rob Conrad winds up blocking both of them, but they shouldn't both be in the same place. Can Hasselbeck do it for the Redskins? He's been brilliant the entire game after replacing Ramsey. Trung candidate on the draw to the 45. Tim Hasselbeck, who came in for the injured Patrick Ramsey, has been extremely efficient. He has been cool under fire, and he has run this offense like he's been with the club for four years instead of four weeks. And put the offense back into his hands. Because he seems to be handling it very well. Second and eight. Blitz. Flags are down. Ball is tipped incomplete. Was Miami offside, or did someone move? Ball start. Number 30. We can't blame them. I'm going to tell you that the Miami Dolphins had nine guys up on the line of scrimmage, and they were all coming. And but I, that was a back. That was Trung Canada. But he's still going to be one of those guys having to pick <laughs> yeah, somebody. That's right. yeah, he's acting like a tackle right now. The big thing is, is when you blitz, there's two things. Number one, you can't get a back out because he's usually in pickup. Plus, you make the quarterback get the ball out of his hands quicker. We talked about Miami having two corners that have been to the Pro Bowl. The Redskins, who had no penalties in the first half and none last week, have five in the second half. Four-man rush. Hasselbeck incomplete. 
That ball should have been caught by Flemiston. See, now I think I think the Redskins here, and Steve Spurrier really doesn't think twice about doing this, but I believe they're in two-down territory. They have two timeouts left. Well, you know, I really I don't think so because they, they still have two timeouts. They've got three and a quarter to go, and they put Miami way down. They're going to try to work Ricky in the clock. Down the two minute warning. All they, get, all they, yeah, all they need they is a three, right? field goal. Down the two minute warning, they'd have three. And boy, is this place getting loud. Third and long. Hasselbeck deep down the middle. Brock Marion with the interception. Intended for Coles, but overthrown, and Marion just played center field. That is his third interception and his 18th in the last four years. We saw Chris Chambers make a one-handed catch. You're going to see Brock Marion stick the one hand out and then gain control of the ball. Watch this. Right hand out, one-hander. Tip it up to yourself and then gain possession. Do you know who was running with Lavernius Coles? Zach, Zach Thomas. Thomas. Zach Thomas had him short. There he is, number 54. Brock Marion's got him deep. He gets as deep as any middle linebacker, I think, that's ever played this game. And the one good thing for the Redskins, this was virtually what they could have hoped for out of a punt. And they only need to get close enough to kick a field goal if they have an opportunity if they can stop the Dolphins here. Now a big dose of Ricky Williams coming. Okay. Breaks a couple of tackles. Drives the pile to the 14. This game is huge for the Dolphins when you look at the AFC playoff race because the wild card teams, Tennessee at 9-2, and two, Miami could go to 7-4. and four. The division leaders automatically qualify and the top two records outside of the division leaders. And Dave Wanstad, who has been under so much pressure and such intense scrutiny here, I think that desperately was a heck, wants this one. I think that was a heck of a move by Dave Wanstad to change quarterbacks and put uh, put Jay Fiedler in and let him go back and see if he could bring his ball club back. I think the fact that his knee responded so well this week gave Dave that kind of confidence. Meanwhile, the Redskins use one of their two timeouts, so they know they have to stop them on this drive. And the other thing, we talked about Wanstack going through so much. He said the way he's been able to get through these tough times is because the guys in the locker room have been there. He has a really strong, good ball club. Those long Brock Marion, Zach Thomas, Jr. say out. There were a lot of rumors going around that there was dissension on this team, but the leader stepped up and said, that's bull. We're behind them all the way. Ricky, over 100 yards this time, wrapped up by Lionel Dalton, who just horse collared him, and the Redskins will use their last timeout. Well, they got the two minutes, and, and Miami can't take it down to the two-minute warning. The Sunday stud winner by 40.6%, Matt Hasselbeck of Seattle. He threw five touchdown passes in a losing cause. His younger brother is playing in this game and has a chance to be a hero as well. Anthony Wright finished second for Baltimore. He had a brilliant game in that comeback. He threw four scores of his own. The winner finished second in the poll. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, I tell you, this young man here, uh, be proud, young man, because he, you did a hell of a job tonight. Well, the Redskins now know that they have two quarterbacks yep. that can play, and I think that, not that it's a consolation to Steve Spurrier, this is a huge third down for his defense, but he knows now he's got a couple guys who can run his offense. Well, if the Redskins lose, they're four and seven, there's not going to be much consolation to he's go He's got to get everybody up around the line of scrimmage now. Third and three. Do they go with Ricky again? Tried to pull him offside, and Ricky dives. He's going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down, and there's no flag. Yeah. Big play. Yeah, there's a flag. No, it isn't. I, big, big no, that play. That was a shoe by the Redskin defense. That was huge. A shoe isn't going to hurt him, is no, it? No, no, not a shoe. Now they'll let the clock run down as long as possible. It will not get to the two-minute warning before Matt Turk, Matt Turk has to kick it away. And Patrick Johnson waits back at his 40.
Hasselbeck will have one more shot. Oh, good and kick. Turk launched one. Johnson back to the 27. He lost the ball. Still on the ground. Miami's got it. Darius Thompson knocked it away. And the Miami Dolphins get a brilliant punt by Turk. What a punt. And the Redskins lose it. James McKnight recovers for Miami. We reach the two-minute warning. The Dolphins have the lead and the ball. Interesting thought. Well, if, if they were going to run a play, you'd let them score, but it looks like the Dolphins are just going to kneel down so the Redskins can't take advantage of that opportunity. Because that would be the Redskins' only chance at this point. Right. Let them score, kick the extra point, and hope you can come back and tie it. But Miami is not going to play the game. What's going to happen here, ultimately, there'll probably be some time left on the clock, so the Dolphins should try and kick a field goal to make it a four-point game forcing them when do you think the last time it was that Miami won a regular season game when they trailed by 13 points in the fourth quarter 1980 very good September 28th very good just, oh, I'm, look. just right off the top of your head just pulled it right out of my head the Dolphins will take a knee the Redskins cannot stop the clock Miami will go to seven and four the Redskins will fall to four and seven the Dolphins in the orange jerseys for the first time will live to fight another day and Steve Spurrier may have found out a lot about his ball club tonight but he is still going to come away with a one point loss and I tell you the Dolphins are playing Thursday. The they Dolphins. needed this. I mean, they really needed this and game. They're, they're playing one heck of a good football team. The Dallas Cowboys won a tough one today against the Carolina Panthers. The Dolphins will travel, and, and Dave Wanstead told us this. I need this. We need this for momentum going into Dallas. It's a short week, and if we can win this one, we'll feel a whole lot better about ourselves. Congratulations to Coach Wanstead. Made another great point. He said, if you win this game, the adrenaline carries you through to next Thursday. You really don't feel the bumps and bruises as much as you think you would. And, and they, they did everything they possibly could do to lose this ball game. What a terrible birthday present for Daniel Snyder, who turns 39 today. Just a heck of a ball game, and Tim Hasselbeck was brilliant in relief of Patrick Ramsey. For Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culver, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Pro Player Stadium in Miami.